Okay, well, uh, welcome to the uh, Brief Flicks interview. Good man. Um, and I'll start from the top, like from where I gave the preamble, as it were. Yeah, so sure. What advice would you give to filmmakers wanting to shoot a film in London to start with? Wow, okay. Um, I would say know what you want, really. Um, yeah. Go, I mean, obviously do your research. Uh, that's what we did, kind of going across the whole of London and also know how you want to shoot the film. I mean, we wanted to shoot something quite expansive across London. So mm. the way we shot the film is we started off in West London and made our way across to East London. So we covered the whole of London as we shot across uh, the city. It was sequentially like that. Yeah, yeah. We started yeah. off, um, the first thing we shot was, wasn't it? It was the, the prison? Yeah, that's yeah, right. we did. Well, we're so we were doing prison. all around there, yeah, to south, yeah. Shepherd's and Bush Market, up. and just constantly working our way through Park Lane H Hotel and the Grosvenor Hotel and so forth, and eventually London Eye, and just all our way over to East London. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, eventually that's where we did Wolf. the car chase and Carnary Wharf. Yeah, mm. and that, I mean, that's I mean, what biggest compliment I think I can give the film is like it, at some point, certainly with the night shots, is you made London look like it could be LA at times. Mm. Oh, so thank you. You know, you, you oh. see like, things like Drive. Mm. Yeah, you know, yeah, the, of the, course. The you get that kind of mm. yeah. glamorous, mm. yeah. kind of sumptuous feel. And I think that's, uh, it's Actually. not always the view you get of London. Mm. No, and no, I think no. looking at your cinematographer having Definitely. some bad boys and stuff is kind of like... Of course, mm. no, that's without, without it was about, a doubt. It was about making it classy, mm. you know, because there's a lot of uh, British films out there that have that gritty dark feel to it but it was like where's the, the glitz and, and glamour mm. the Hollywood uh, uh, you know of London mm. and we've got a lot of great things in this country and it's mm. a beautiful city mm. and yeah. especially at night you know it's a cool city to live in particularly and John McKenzie's like Long Good Friday you know that was a film that was like quite a it's just a very mm. glamorous sh the f yeah. way the film shot is extremely glamorous and yeah. that was something we wanted and the to subject glamorous. matter as well it's like that's a film that not many films have been made like mm. that and why you know what, well that and Get Carter I think those are two films I think you yeah. referencing yeah, yeah yeah very much so yeah. also I mean Walter Hill's The Driver was, was a big influence really? yeah, yeah yeah just the, the, and that's just the way we try to shoot London at night, you know, because mm. if you look at a lot of the seventies films like Marathon Man, Parallax View, a lot of those pictures, they're mm. all just location set pictures, mm. but mm. they all stand up today because mm. the the architecture doesn't change. And mm. if you shoot it with the right cinematographer, mm. hopefully it will hold up you over the years. You couldn't shoot it like those films today either. It's like it's very simple. The idea, like the driver, you know, it's mm. the guy and he's really driving in the car, and it's the action you're seeing. You know, mm. it's beautiful. And, 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 and did, I mean, from what I could see in the film, did you get to shoot on Bishopsgate, that, some of that car chase? Mm. Yeah, no, that, yeah, that, was, a, that was a kind of situation where we shot that in two days. Mm. I mean, literally, I, I walked it all. Hats off to you there. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> no, we, had we extra Twitter, we had a lot of guys. A lot of guys, safety-wise, but literally, we just sequentially broke it all down and I like, split the car chase up between two parts of London. Mm. One is around Bishopsgate and the other bit is around, uh, around, around Canary Wharf because we had no lighting. Mm. So literally everything you see is the natural lights that are around the city. And so and we just literally just decided on a couple of camera angles and that was it. We just went there and just positioned everything and just got so, on with it. So mm. shot, um, shot with ambient light mostly? Everything's shot with yeah. ambient light. Everything's one Top take. Door, yeah, 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 one take. There wasn't, there wasn't a chance for two takes. Yeah, yeah, just action all the way. Get it in first time. Yeah. Clean gate because we shot 35 mil. Clean gate, good, let's move. Clean mm. gate, good, let's move. Yeah, <laughs> that, never moved so quickly in yeah. our lives. So yeah. there's a, like there's a hysteria attached to the production of yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> definitely over that they, those two nights full yeah. of energy yeah. like the yeah. film you know it's energy yeah. it goes all the way through you know um, uh, uh, Gabriel Burns character yeah I've never heard this expression like the merchant where where did that expression come from in your research in terms of Should a gangland leader I've never heard them do you know what I was just when I was sitting there and I was writing uh, you know the film is kind of like it's a homage as well to like you know Michael Mann and people like that mm. and stuff and it was like I, I just hadn't heard there wasn't any particular research if I'm honest it was just a case of the merchant and I'm just going to write this sounded good. it just sounded good I was okay, just writing it and I'm the and the merchant of this city and you know yeah, yeah. nothing without a centigrade of heat that comes through you know it doesn't because you see yeah. that coming through me it just felt very natural and, and very right for the and moment actually that is the, the main point from your question before is to start with making any movie the script yeah. firstly before you think about anything else get the script right yeah. and it's those characters that will drive your story but also if you're thinking as a producer and thinking like George had places in mind to film it mm. so you're already knowing how you're going to film it mm. yeah, yeah. and why the characters are doing what they're doing 
then then you just got to film it right and, and you've got a good movie. Just got to film it right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And direct it right. <laughs> so then in, in terms of, you, you, you talk from the writing point of view, you, you, mm. you said you got those characters down and then you said, I think, you, I can't remember exactly the words yeah. in the, in the Q&A with the production, but it's like yeah. the idea they started to come alive in, in terms of yeah. The writing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You just, you just, Start writing mm. the characters out on the page. You know them so well, like. Well, they talk to you. Yeah. As you as you do, the, the, the more you go through the process, you don't really know. Mm. I mean, I didn't know where the film was going to end. I just had a very broad. I just started with the words pitch mm. black. That's how I started the screenplay, and then from there, I just let create the characters mm. and the characters. When you know, start talking to you, you know what a definite yes or a no is yeah. for that character. You know what they definitely won't do, mm. or they, what they definitely will do. You know. So uh, once you've got all of them feeding off each other, it's, it's an ensemble piece mm -hmm. with all the characters in there. You know, they yeah. all have their position in it. But that only works itself once you've uh, once you start writing the screenplay. And mm. the, the, as I said, this, the, the, that character will lead you down this road, and then how that character interacts with this character, mm. and eventually you get to a point where you really, they, as I said, they all start speaking to you. So you kind of the story starts speaking to you in itself okay. and then it comes off the page. And, we, and you've got a lot, of everybody, I think it's, it's almost everybody's an anti-hero. That's right. Yeah, argument, yeah, yeah. The argument yeah. isn't like a, a yeah. protagonist who's mm. the good no. guy. No, that's right. So what would, you, what would you say would be the kind of, the moral at the heart, is there a, mo what moral is at the heart of um, all things? Well, I think there's, there's it, it's, it's all about choices, isn't it? I mean, everyone, I think, particularly in a city, you know, we're all quite isolated and it's the choices you make. And I think in this particular instance, you have a melting pot of characters that come together. Mm. And ultimately, it's about making the right moral choice. Mm. Mm. And the, mo the moral choice in this particular film is very great. You yeah. know, and the, what the character Sands tells you, tells you that pretty early in the story when he's speaking to the character yeah, yeah. Dixon and he, he kind of lays it down what's going to have to happen yeah. in order for you to make a decision and for you to move forward. And that's what happens at the end of the story. And yeah. it's like, does he make that decision to, or he could take the easier decision, yeah. you know? And as I said, the moral compass is skewed, but ultimately he has to make a decision to, to go in one direction. And, uh, you know, that's the anti-hero. Yeah, and I, I guess we'll finish it on about. I'll just say that I thought that kind of moral dilemma at the end is a nice, it was a yeah. nice ending with. Uh, we won't do the spoiler. But yeah, you won't do the spoiler, <laughs> but yeah, you know, you, we know what you. Yeah. Yeah, great. Well, thank you very much for your My time. My pleasure. All right, nice you one. take.